Quantum biology is becoming a very important subject. We are beginning to understand that quantum phenomena, which we used to think of as being things occurring at very small scales of electrons and protons and subatomic particles, actually those phenomena manifest at, at what's called the macroscopic or the visible palpable level. So there's a whole, a whole new world opening up to us and the great discoveries of quantum physics will become understood by everybody. In fact, most people really understand that we are all connected. We all are, to use the physics term, we're entangled. Entanglement is one of the rules of quantum physics it distinguishes quantum physics from classical Newtonian physics. Newtonian physics explains how billiard balls bounce off of each other in predictable ways, how machines work, why it's difficult to push your car uphill, things like that. Gravity, Newton's law of gravity. These are very valuable concepts. We can make machines, we can use Newtonian physics uh, in all areas of our mechanistic world. Uh, quantum physics doesn't say that those things are wrong, it just says that there's another subtle level of interaction and that level of interaction concerns all of space, the energy that is present everywhere in space, the way we affect the properties of space. The way, the possibility is that space has information that we can tap into. And that and one of the profound ideas that was violently rejected by science is Rupert Sheldrake's idea of the morphogenetic field. The idea that space contains information that is the pattern for morphogenesis, for embryological development, that that information is not inside the cell in the DNA, but it's in space. And that DNA is somehow able to resonate with and pull information in and exchange information between the innermost parts of our cells and the, the environment around us and vice versa. There's a constant flow of information back and forth. And this is a fantastic idea. And this is quantum physics in action and can explain, I believe, the morphogenetic field. And I think Sheldrake's idea needs to be looked at very seriously. I rejected it myself when I first heard it. He said that the morphogenetic field, the field that forms structures, is not classical, classical field such as electricity and magnetism. And I said, how do you know? Have you tested to see if electricity and magnetism are the morphogenetic fields? And electricity and magnetism do play roles in the formation of pattern, but it now appears that there are more subtle fields that are part of the quantum realm that have different properties that underlie electricity and magnetism and those fields are scalar fields, they are quantum fields, they are the quantum potential, they have different names and they are everywhere in space and they carry profoundly important information. So the information that comes from a therapist may involve simple changing the movement of electrons or charge in the tissue, but it may also include information on the restoration of pattern, the, the regeneration of damaged tissue back into its original form. So this is where quantum physics is providing answers to questions that we've been puzzling about for a long time.